Good morning. Let's pray together. Father, we love you, Lord, and it is great for us who believe, Lord, as we could truly say, it is well with our soul. And Lord, we praise you and we thank you for an opportunity uh, to come and worship today. And Lord, as we enter into a time, my prayer is that, Lord, our, your word would fill our hearts and fill our minds. And Lord, that we uh, Lord, would eliminate distractions from our minds and hearts today as we receive your truth uh, into our lives. We're thankful for you. We're thankful for those who, who serve and use their talents and gifts. And Lord, we're thankful for, for this church and the light that it produces in our community. And Lord, my prayer is that we would continue to do so and you continue to show us ways in which we can serve you. And as we enter a time of worship today, my prayer is that our hearts will be in tune to what you have to say to us. In Jesus' name, amen. At this time, I'd like for you to stand this morning. I'd like to encourage you guys to turn to one another and greet one another. Thank you.
You call me out upon the waters, the great unknown, where feet may fail. And there I find you in the mystery, in oceans deep, my faith will stand. And I will call upon your name And keep my eyes above the waves When oceans arise, my soul will rest in your embrace For I am yours And you are mine Your grace abounds in deepest waters. Your sovereign hand will be my guide. Where feet may fail and fear surrounds me, you've never failed and you won't start now. So I will call upon your name And keep my eyes above the waves When oceans arise, my soul will rest in your embrace For I am yours And you are mine, oh And you are mine, oh. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me take me deeper than my feet could ever wonder and my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my savior spirit lead me where my trust is without borders let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me take me deeper than my feet could ever wander and my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my savior spirit lead me where my trust is without borders let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me take me deeper than my feet could ever wander and my faith would be made stronger in the presence of my savior and I will call upon your name And keep my eyes above the waves When oceans arise, my soul will rest in your embrace For I am yours And you are mine
Thank you, Emma, for that lovely rendition. Amen. Let's give her another hand. This morning's scripture is taken from the book of Proverbs. Now, I picked up a few Bible to read from so you and I would be on the same page, and it's found on page 484. We're going to read from the 16th chapter, verses 1 through 9. I'll give you a minute to find that. Page 484. It's good to see all of you here this morning got a pretty good crowd. A pretty crowd anyway. <laughs> Proverbs 16, 1 through 9. To man belong the plans of the heart, but from the Lord comes the reply of the tongue. All a man's ways seem innocent to him, but motives are weighed by the Lord. Commit to the Lord whatever you do, and your plans will succeed. The Lord works out everything for his own ends, even the wicked, for a day of disaster. The Lord detests all the proud of heart. Be sure of this, they will not go unpunished. Through love and faithfulness, Sin is atoned for. Through the fear of the Lord, a man avoids evil. When a man's ways are pleasing to the Lord, he makes even his enemies live out in peace with him. Better a little with righteousness than much gain with injustice. In his heart, a man plans his course, but the Lord determines his steps. The word of God to the people of God. Praise be to God. If you'll please stand as we sing hymn number 431 in your hymnals. Number 431, Shine, Jesus, Shine. We'll sing all three verses. Number 431. of your love is shining in the midst of the darkness shining Jesus lights of the world shine upon us set us free by the truth you now bring us shine on me shine on Shine, Jesus, shine, fill this land with the Father's glory, blaze, Spirit, blaze, set our hearts on fire, flow, river, flow, flood the nations with grace and mercy, send forth your word, Lord, and let there be light. Lord, I come to your awesome presence from the shadows and to your radiance by the blood I may enter your brightness search me try me consume all my darkness shine on me shine on me shine jesus shine fill this land with the father's glory and mercy send forth your word 
day to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, we gather here today just to just be close to you, and Lord, we gather here to praise you. And Lord, we just take this time to take a pause, to, to turn our eyes toward you, to focus on you, and take this time to thank you. Thank you for all the many blessings you've given us. Thank you for what you've done in our lives, Lord. Lord, we pray that you bless this offerings that are taken today, and we, we pray that you would lead us to use them wisely. Lord, we, we pray that everything we do today and is in your honor and in your glory. And Lord, we thank you for loving us. Thank you for your saving grace, Lord. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Please be seated.
nothing can stand against what a powerful name it is the name of jesus what a powerful name it is the name of jesus you have no rivals you have no equals now in There is a rising generation with the name of the Lord on their lips. And like the name of Jesus, that too is a beautiful and a wonderful thing. We are glad and grateful as a church. Take your Bible again, if you would. God's people taking up God's word now in God's house. Would you turn to Matthew's gospel? Chapter 26. Matthew chapter 26, verses 36 through 46. When you're there in sacred scripture, uh, follow along if you would while I read it aloud. <clears throat> As a church, now let's... Uh, Look to the word of the Lord. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, sit here while I go over there and pray. And taking with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, Jesus began to be sorrowful. And troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is very sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and watch with me. And going on a little farther, he fell on his face and prayed, saying, My father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. And Jesus came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, so could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, for the second time. Jesus went away and prayed, My Father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. And again he came and, and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So, uh, leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words again. Then Jesus came to the disciples and said to them, Sleep. And take your rest later on. See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. 
Rise, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In how many homes has this scenario played out? Dad or mom. Uh, Susie Q, it's bath time. Susie Q, I don't want a bath. But you need a bath. I don't need a bath. Susie Q, you need a bath to be clean. I can be clean without a bath. I don't think so, dear. I do think so. Kids can be willful. (laughs) Very, very willful. They tend to think that they know what's right and best. They're not inclined to ask about dad's or mom's will on the matter. They're not inclined to acknowledge that dad or mom knows best. They're even less inclined to defer to dad's or mom's will. In a real way, we all do this. We tend to think that we know what's right and best for ourselves. This is especially true when we're in some trouble or find ourselves headed for trouble. Scared for our own skin, we want desperately so to control our own fate. We want to steer clear of pain and suffering. We dare not leave the last word to anyone else, including God. But God knows best. The right way, even if it's a hard way, is whatever His will is. Rather than depending on our own will, we ought to say, like Jesus said, not as I will, but as you will. According to our text for this morning, Matthew chapter 26, verses 36 through 46, God always wills what's best. So we must desire for God's will to be done in our distressing situations. Jesus and his disciples are walking. They're heading outside Jerusalem toward the Mount of Olives. The mood is somber. Jesus has just said that he will be betrayed. He's also just said that all the disciples will abandon him. Even Peter, says Jesus, will deny knowing him three times before morning. Verse 36 of chapter 26 says, Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane. Gethsemane means olive press. Somewhere on the Mount of Olives, not far from the city, they enter an area set aside for pressing olives into oil. This is where Jesus wants to stop. Jesus wants his disciples with him. But he also wants to be alone for a few minutes. He wants to pray. Quote, and he said to his disciples, sit here while I go over there. And pray. Verse 37 says, And taking with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, Jesus summons three disciples, Peter, James, and John. These three were with Jesus when he raised the dead girl back to life. These three were with Jesus when he was transfigured up on that mountain. Now Jesus wants them to go with him to pray. When they get to where they're going, Jesus quote, began to be sorrowful and troubled. He turns to to tell the three who are with him. Verse 38 says, And he said to them, My soul is very sorrowful, even to death. Jesus is so sad right now that it could almost kill him. It transcends anything a mere human might feel. It's the kind of sorrow that only the Son of God can know. Jesus tells Peter, James, and John to, quote, remain here and watch. 
watch with me. He means for them to pray while he prays. Possibly, he wants them to keep a lookout too. By now, uh, Judas has gone AWOL, missing. Jesus expects him to show up soon with others and with bad intentions. Jesus uh, walks on by himself a little ways. Verse 39 says, And going on a little farther, he fell on his face and prayed. Jesus gets prostrate. Uh, he, he, he kneels or, or, or lays down entirely. He puts his face to the Gethsemane ground. This kind of posture is typically used for intense prayer. Jesus prays, My Father, if it is be possible, let this cup pass from me. Strictly speaking, Jesus isn't really asking if it's possible. God, God can do anything. What he's really asking is if it still fits with your salvation plan. The cup Jesus mentions is the suffering and death that awaits him. If there is still a way for God to save the world without Jesus suffering and dying, Jesus wants that. But Jesus also prays this. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. Even more deeply than what he wants, Jesus wants so deeply what his heavenly Father wants. If, 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 if the Father says, no, Jesus the plan is for you to suffer and die. Then Jesus says, okay, I'll do it. After a while, Jesus pauses in his prayer. He gets up from the ground and goes back to Peter, James, and John. Verse 40 says, and he came uh, to the disciples and found them sleeping. After Jesus left them, they fell asleep. Luke's gospel says they are, quote, exhausted from sorrow. Jesus addresses Peter, but he's really talking to all three. Quote, and he said to Peter, so could you not watch with me one hour? Then in verse 41, watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. Jesus wants them to watch and pray against temptation. He might be thinking of them being tempted to leave him. The spirit indeed is willing, says Jesus. Oh, but the flesh is weak. They say they'll stay with Jesus, but Jesus knows. They possess a deep and profound sense of self-preservation. Verse 42 says again, for the second time, he, Jesus, went away and prayed. My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. It's the same prayer Jesus prayed before. He doesn't want to die and suffer and die if he doesn't have to, but if the father says to do it, then Jesus will do it. In verse 43, Jesus uh, gets back up and goes back to Peter, James, and John. Quote, and again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. It's like Jesus said last time. They're probably willing, very willing to pray, but they're so weak from being worn out. So they sleep. Well, Jesus goes back to his spot. Verse 44 says, So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words again. Again, Jesus reiterates, If there is another way, Father, to save the world, then please do it. But if not, then I will do it your way. Even if I must die, 
Jesus finishes praying for the last time. Verse 45 says that uh, <clears throat> then he came to the disciples and said to them, sleep and take your rest later on. It seems, but it's no surprise, that Peter, James, and John are still snoozing. So Jesus wakes them up. They need to see what's about to happen. Quote, see, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. M mere moments ago, uh, Jesus was praying in deep sorrow. But now he is composed again. Uh, he, there's a, a mob approaching from the city. He, he hears their footsteps. He he sees the torches. It's, it's a group he knows that's coming to look for him so they can arrest him. Now is the fateful moment. Judas, at one time one of his closest disciples, now makes good on his deal with the religious leaders to betray him. So Jesus rises, composed again. As the approaching mob suggests, his prayer has been answered. The Father has confirmed that the cup of suffering and death won't pass from him. But you know what? True to what he prayed, Jesus is okay with that. He is ready to accept his fate. He knows that whatever God wants for him right now in this moment is his will. In verse 46, he says to the disciples, Rise, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Jesus is in a bad situation. He, he's expressed his distress to the Father. But that's not all that Jesus prays, is it? Your will be done, Father. That's the rest of what Jesus prays. See, Jesus knows that God knows best always. Not only that, Jesus knows that God wants What's best? And this is, this is true even if it means suffering and death for him. God has a reason and that is good enough for Jesus. So he goes forward and he faces his fate. He readies himself to receive whatever God has in store for him. The story goes like this. A man enjoys walking in his garden. He always stops to admire the bamboo tree. He uh, runs his hand over the long, sturdy stalk. He smiles up at the leaves way up high. Bamboo, says the man, I want to cut you down and use you for my purpose. Bamboo trembles. Horrified. C cut me down? Me? Your beloved bamboo? Not that, master. N not that. Can can't you do something else with me? Please, master, don't cut me down. I must, says the man. In order to use you, I must cut you down. I must strip away all your branches and all your leaves. I must split you open and split you in two. This is how I want to use you, Bamboo. Bamboo is still and silent. But after a moment, he bows. Master, he says, if this is what you want, then may it not be as I will, but as you will. So the man picks up his axe and he swings it at his beloved bamboo. He cuts bamboo down. He then hacks off all the branches and, and strips away all the leaves. Uh, starting at one end of the long, sturdy stalk, he proceeds to cut bamboo open. He splits bamboo in two lengthwise. When he's done... The man carries bamboo to his field. The field is dry. 
but in the middle is a spring of water. The man lays bamboo down, placing one end in the spring and the other end in the field. The water rushes out from the spring, down the bamboo channel, and into the field. When the field is watered, the man plants rice. The resulting harvest will feed his entire village. Jesus, like bamboo with his master, asks the father if there is another way. But more than he wants what he wants, he wants what the heavenly father wants even more. He knows that his father's will is best, even if it means suffering and dying. See, Jesus trusts the heavenly father. So, so gladly, gladly, not grudgingly, he submits to the father's will. During our lives, we will all find ourselves in difficult situations. We will have tough choices to make. We will be reluctant to do the right thing because we fear that people will treat us wrong as a result. We will be anxious about the way ahead. Some folks get more of this, some folks less, but it happens to all of us. Jesus said, in this world you will have trouble. See, Jesus knows that, and he can say that because he knows that. He knows from experience. That's one of the reasons that Jesus came into this world and became human. He wanted to live as we live and persevere as we persevere and grieve as we grieve. In a real and meaningful way, Jesus came looking for trouble so he could sympathize with us. Jesus sympathizes with our difficult situations. What's tempting in times like these is to shut down and shut it all out. To escape from the difficulty and the distress would be wonderful, wouldn't it? Peter, James, and John, they laid down and fell asleep. We'd like to do the same. We don't want to think about it. That means acknowledging there's a problem. We don't want to deal with it. That means doing something hard. No, we just want to be happy and carefree, not sad. We want to see no problem, hear no problem, and speak no problem. But Jesus didn't do that. As exhausted and as sad as he was, Jesus didn't simply tune it all out. He prayed to God, his heavenly Father, and so must we. When we find ourselves between a rock and a hard place, we must pray. When we need to know the right choice, we must pray. When the only way forward is a way that we don't want to go, we must pray. We must pray. You know, besides helping us to know the right way to go, praying soothes our soul. Prayer is fellowship with God. It is the practice of keeping God's company, even as we ask God what His will is. Just because we are already in His presence with our hearts set on Him, we already sense that we are okay. And that no matter what happens, we will be okay. The mere act of prayer keeps us from collapsing into despair. When we pray with a problem in mind, it's okay to ask God for another way. Jesus senses the way that he must go, but it's not a desirable way, is it? So he asks God for an alternative. See, God is okay with us being honest and saying, I don't want this. I don't want to choose this. I don't want to go there. I don't want to confront so-and-so. I don't want to risk my life or my livelihood or my reputation. I don't want this! 
Please, Father, if it be possible, let there be another way. The rest of that prayer goes like this. Nevertheless, 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 not my will, but your will be done. Jesus, after asking God for an alternative, says that he wants God's will most of all. And that's how we have to pray too. At the end of our plea, we must finish by affirming God's will. The the way ahead, it might be a hard way, but if that's the way that God wants us to go, then you know what? That's the right way. God is good. I mean, He is inherently and eternally good. He is the standard of goodness. Therefore, all that God wills to happen is for good. And this is true of all that He does, from the cosmos down to the anthropos, from the world down to humanity. Now, believe me, I know. I know because I've been there that sometimes we cannot straight away see how something can be good. But if we, if we consider the bigger picture, then it might become clear. Take Jesus' suffering and death. I mean, how could that be good? God used it to pay for all the sins of the world. That's how it's good. Trust God. Believe that He is good. Believe that His will, what He wants, is best. But don't just just trust. Tell Him that you trust Him. Tell Him that you believe that He is good. Tell Him that you want His will and you know that it's best. Tell Him that you want His will to be done more than you want your own will. Better yet, tell Him that You want to be so close to Him that whatever you want is always and ever whatever He wants. Use Jesus' very words if you want to. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. Your will, Father, be done. Okay. What do we do after we pray? Well, like Jesus, we rise from our prayer posture. We rise, composed and resolute, facing forward. We are ready for whatever comes. However God chooses to answer our prayer, whether He gives us the alternative that we ask for or whether He says that we must go through hardship, we are ready for it. We know that God wills whatever is best And so we can take it. Furthermore, furthermore, God will be right there with us. God will be right there with us. When we come to our decisive moment, and regardless of how it goes, God will go the distance with us. He will sustain us with every bit of spiritual strength that we need. He will whisper in our hearts, this is my will. You can do this. Nothing can separate you from me and my love. God will validate our faith when we get to the end of our trial, but I'll do you one better. He will validate our faith even when we are in the midst of that trial. Why? Because He'll be with us. You know what? Others will notice. It is not common, not in this world, for someone to say, I am good with God's will. It's even less common to prove it, to live it out. Calm and confident in the face, in the midst of trial and tribulation. That kind of life draws people. It draws them to the source of your strength, to God. As they see you at peace in your storm, they will learn the path to peace for themselves. By nature, 
the world does not want God's will. Humanity, ever since Eden, has opposed God. Wanting God's will and wanting it more than we want our own will requires nothing less than a new heart. Behold what God has done for us. God sent His Son, Jesus. Jesus, deferring to His heavenly Father's will over His own, died on a cross. He died in our place. He died to take our penalty for all our sin. Jesus fully and forever paid what we owed to God for our sin debt. God's forgiveness, thanks to Jesus, now awaits whosoever will receive it for themselves. All it takes to receive it is faith. By faith, we receive God's forgiveness in our lives. And at the same time, something happens inside us. God changes us from the inside. He puts the Holy Spirit into our hearts to give us a new heart. And one of the ways that we change is that we now want God's will to be done. It's the Spirit of God who helps us to want the will of God. Now that we want God's will, we want His kingdom to come. And we want it to come soon, don't we? We want to live forever in a new creation. We want to receive the reward that's promised us for living out God's word, including today's lesson. God always wills what's best. So we must desire for God's will to be done in our distressing situations. Let's pray together. God, this is tough. But this is the way you've laid out for us. And you have given us the model of your son. So we trust that we can do this. And with your help, we can look for the good. And we can look for your will. And we can trust that your will is good. Will you help us now? To be a people like Jesus who would say, nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. We pray it in your name, Father, Son, and Spirit. Amen. We're going to sing a song, a few verses of song in a moment. This, this is a part of our response time. Um, I would invite you to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit and if there's one of those moments taking place in your life right now where you really want your will... But